彼らと人類の間には圧倒的な力の差が存在し、たちまち人類は絶滅の危機を迎えた。Yeah, not hard to see why they were pushed to extinction. マリア、ローゼ、シーナの三つの壁を築き、そこで百年の平和を実現させた。しかし。<笑> I can't imagine what that must feel like. You know, like suddenly, you know, you just live in your life as a farmer or whatever, and then these giant humanoid creatures. So, already a lot of questions, obviously, right? They obviously didn't come out of a vacuum. And they look human, so you know that humans did it. <laughs> something went wrong. Somebody wanted something. That's what happens when you have too much ambition. You know, you want too much, you end up creating giant humanoid man eating monsters. <laughs> that day, the fall of Shiganshina Part 2. <laughs> This guy again. What happened to God's wall? At least he's dedicated. I wonder if there's secretly something to this. They're so terrifying looking. You kind of ask for that. So, even though I think this guy is purposely positioned here as like someone who seems unstable and out of their minds, I bet there's something to what he's saying. And he's focusing a lot on greed and avarice. It was kind of hard to understand with the weird, like, old English translation they gave it. But I think he's saying that humans got to the point where they don't even value their own flesh, and that greed is the thing that allowed this terrible thing to befall them. What the hell? That's the worst thing to say to him. What the hell? Okay, that's more like it. Damn, that's rough. What happened again? I was thinking about Hans after the first episode and what a tough choice that was, you know? It does seem to be like on a practical level, there's no way he was gonna beat that Titan. And it's hard to believe that his sacrifice would have saved the mother anyway. But that's a really difficult thing for him to have to think about, right? That he came face to face with the Titan and then fled, despite the fact that he said like he had a debt to repay or something like that, you know? And now he's looking at this kid, this poor kid who, whose mother just got eaten and has to own up to that. And Eren is just not gonna understand in the state that he's in, obviously. To Han's credit, you can imagine that having gone very differently where he died and then the mother died and the kids died, right? So it's really hard to judge him for that, but I can understand why he would be hard on himself about it. The only thing I don't like, and I may have misunderstood what it said, was he told Eren that it's in some way his fault for lacking strength, right? That's not, that's not accurate. It's, it wasn't his fault. Although I can see that moment becoming significant for Eren, framing it that way like it's his fault. And to all their credit, they're all in shock. <laughs> right, and this is all still happening too. So they're like bait or something? Yeah, he's wearing it all over his face. Yeah, they're not prepared at all. Yeah, now he's got a chip on his shoulder. Props to these people for even standing up. This does such a good job, like, capturing the panic of what this must feel like. Like, nothing matters, no protocol matters. Yeah, probably most of these people never actually had to fight. Yeah, it's all gonna fall apart. Oh, it's big boy. Wait, what? What is that? No, he's not about to just bust through the wall, is he? He is. <laughs> Only the game matters at this point. Yeah. Seems like there are different classes of titans or something like that. This one seems like almost mechanical. Crazy! <laughs>
<laughs> Damn, man. So it seems like there are different kinds of titans, right? Like that one, I don't know what the hell that thing was. I love these moments that convey this kind of like primal fear. It's interesting how like immediately relatable that is, even though I've never experienced anything like this. <laughs> Thankfully, I feel like that's something like we're just born with, right? We're born with that innate, like animalistic sense of survival and like predators being prey. I remember having a conversation with a friend once about this feeling, right? I feel like there's something about that that we, we look for, maybe because we have a deficiency, right? Like not to say that I would like to live in this town where that's being attacked by these giant monsters, but we sort of remove that animal nature from our lives. You know, we've removed the threat of predation. I feel like we seek things out in life to make up for that deficiency, like sports and like fighting and action, right? I think on some level, there's this part of ourselves, this animal naturalistic part that we don't really explore. It's not something that we often get to express, which is part of what makes it so exhilarating. What is that? Hans just can't catch a break. This poor guy. Oh no, he is taking it to heart. What are you gonna do? Yeah, get out of this kid's way. Yeah, it's hard not to take the events of this day to heart for him, especially after what Han said to him. And especially since he already had that drive to begin with, even before the attack. And we, the audience know, like, it's not your fault. You couldn't have done anything differently. But also I have the feeling of like, just get out of this kid's way completely. Let him use this in a way that gives him purpose. Even if he is being too hard on himself, like, let it fuel him. If he's motivated like that to do something that great, you know, it's hard not to respect that. And you can feel that. And I'm guessing his friends will feel that too, that there's just going to be no talking him out of this course. <laughs> So now it's all these people crammed into this tiny, tiny place. Wow, 10,000 people. Wait, what? Don't forget the key. So this is bizarre because it looks like a flashback, but it can't be. I mean, it's a dream, so who knows, right? But in that, his father talks about the death of his mother, which just happened. So there's no way that could be a flashback. But I know it has some greater significance. So I gotta remember that. Why do I get the feeling like this actually happened and it's not just a dream? And that's the second nightmare in two episodes. Yeah, now they're gonna have like population pressures on top of resource pressure since they have less space. <laughs> Yeah, the danger is humanity too, not just the titans. So I was saying this was going to bring people together, but actually it's just tearing them apart more. That's true. It's a different thing seeing it for yourself. These people are living in this, the luxury of this inner circle. I'm taking sides now about classes. I mean, yeah, that's true, but you don't have to be such a jerk about it. You don't have to wish for people's deaths. You're not ready. He's not actually talking to Armin though. Yeah, he's talking to himself and to society at large. Don't take it personally, Armin. She's gonna come around though. <laughs> There's something to all of their perspectives, it's just that all of them are limited in some way. They have to come together. Aaron's right that nothing will ever change if people don't 
get inspired to do something about it. Mikasa's right that you gotta stay alive. Armin's right that you can't be both counter to the Titans and counter to society, right? Like you have to be a little bit more measured. There's nothing that Eren can do by rushing off by himself. But his ethos is right, I think. Like people need to do something. And I think that sometimes that's where it starts. It starts with the extreme. And I think if channeled correctly, that could be a beautiful thing. You know, if they actually, if that actually forms into something meaningful and useful, that isn't just him sacrificing himself out of anger and rage. <laughs> Wow。あいつら<笑> そう。だからあなたを死なせないためにああ。3人で。さあ、ビッグモーメント。だわんあらベターでんでる I feel like we're gonna get to know all these characters, and a lot of them are gonna die. <sighs> no BS, I like it. There he is, all grown up. Sort of. Get out of this guy's way. <laughs> I believe him. Nice. These two episodes together, they do such a great job creating Aaron's motivation. He was always principled, even before the loss of his mother. But then having to experience that firsthand, like watching the Titans rampage the, that part of the town, it's real in a new way. So we understand the drive, we understand the commitment. I mean, there's sort of like nothing else, right? They have their backs against the wall. And it seems that Aaron probably is right. You know, like if nothing changes, it's just inevitable that humanity, assuming that this is even the only human settlement, will be wiped out. There has to be a growing sentiment for a pushback, for like an organized force. Who better, you know, who better to actually like join the ranks than someone who completely understands the significance and what's at stake. So it's so easy to root for Eren. Like I'm thinking like, no dude, it's not your fault. Don't beat yourself up. But on the other hand, I'm like, yeah, like use it, take that as fuel and do what you need to do. It's way better than the alternative of just wallowing in the sadness of everything and giving up all hope and there's nothing we can do, you know? When people experience adversity, it's so much more inspiring to see them take elements of that and use it as fuel to do great things rather than like withering. That's something that will always inspire me, you know, because I think there's sort of a temptation. It's kind of easy to slip into just darkness about it and like, it's all my fault and life is just unfair and there's no hope, you know? That sort of defeatist thinking is, it's really appealing because it lets you off the hook. But the thought of, well, I have this huge problem or this terrible thing happened. Who am I going to be in this? Like, what am I going to do? How am I going to make it better? That to me, I just love. Even though there are risks to that too. I don't know, I, I think sometimes there are moments where you need that. You just need that singular vision even if it's all consuming and you just hope that you can accomplish great things and then end up in a place where you actually can start reflecting and like become a better person and live a great life, you know? So I'm rooting for Eren and I'm rooting for Armin and I'm rooting for Mikasa even though her motivations for joining are a little weak. Like, I don't really know much about their relationship. It's sort of been like stated explicitly by the show that she really cares about Eren and, and wants to take care of him and she made that promise to his mother. But I wonder if there isn't more to that. I'm sure there's gonna be some backstory there maybe. And I also feel like she probably cares more than she's letting on. That's just a hunch. But anyway, that's the end of episode two. I'm guessing that episode three will pick up as adults so that's really exciting i can't wait to see their training i always love master pupil thing training things it's gonna be great but that is the end of episode two i'll see you guys next time for episode three